In this week's episode of Go Angling, I'm with my good buddy Tracy Schindler, and we're targeting largemouth bass just west of Minneapolis. In-depth outdoors, Go Angling. Brought to you by Gander Outdoors. There's one. Bite on the Sanko, eh? Yep. Hey, that's a good one. Not a bad one. A little bit of junk with them. Let's see what we got. <laughs> <laughs> the second cast with the Senko up in there. And... Yeah. Oh, there I got her. Let that one go. Hopefully we get a few more and some, a couple bigger. That's a good one. Where'd that one come from? <laughs> right under the right boat. Right under the boat? Yeah, that's a good one. Come up here. A little better one there. Actually I thought it was a pike. I watched him come up and eat it. But <laughs> started tossing a swim jig around and eat it pretty much right away. Not a bad one there. Ooh, that looked like a good splash there. Yeah, it doesn't feel like a big one, but that was a heck of Ooh, a splash. jumper. He was way up tight. Oh, that's a nice one there, man. There we go. That's a nice one. Tracy got us on the pattern of these, throwing these swim jigs. It's been working awesome. But that's basically all there is to it. It's just a skirted jig. That's a Terminator Pro jig. And I'm just using a Yum Christy Craw on there for a trailer. But pretty simple technique, just running it straight to 30 pound braid on a seven foot medium rod. Right now we're in really, really heavy coon tail and pond weed. So we're just swimming it back, probably only about a foot to two feet down underneath the surface. We're in about four feet of water and they're just coming up and cracking it. Bad one there. No. Yeah. Putting on a clinic. They all seem to be pretty consistent, all in that same same size mm -hmm. range. So, oh, right back. See if we can't get a few more. That worked. Boy, I must have cast it right on top of that one. <laughs> nice. Boy, we've got just, I mean, the average size on this leg is awesome. There we go. Nice bass there. Beautiful. There she goes. You know, we've experimented with quite a few different presentations today. You know, caught a few on Sankos, a uh, few on weightless craws, things like that. But it's still been hard to beat that Terminator jig with just a craw for a trailer there. Uh, green pumpkin, black and blue, we've got some on kind of some crayfish looking colors. It really seems like the main thing is you want it swimming above the weeds and they want it moving. It's a pretty fun way to fish and a really fun way to cover a lot of water. Oh, that one feels heavy. Oh, that's a big one there. That's a real one. That's a little better one there. Just choked it too, you can see they just had it down there. It's fun when they eat it that well, but got a little bit slower there for a second and went back to old faithful black and blue and paid off. Nice work. Here's a quick rundown on the gear we're using for large molds today. Uh, it starts out uh, seven to seven three 
medium heavy bait casting rod. This one here is an Okuma TCS rod. Uh, really nice rod for pitching bigger baits like this. This is a 3 8 ounce Terminator Pro jig. And then the line we're using is 30 pound 832 braid. That's a suffix line. Uh, and we're not using any fluorocarbon leaders or anything like that. A lot of times these fish get in some pretty heavy vegetation and you need that heavy braid to be able to get them out and get them to the surface and to the boat. If you come in with, you know, say a 10 pound test braid and that fish digs down deep into the vegetation, you're probably not gonna be able to get them out. And we'll pair that with a Okuma Helios TCS reel. This is a 6.3 to one gear ratio reel. Uh, it's a pretty fast pickup for fishing a jig like this and also for reeling those fish in. So that's a basic rundown on what we're using. Very basic, uh, a seven foot medium heavy rod is preferred and it works awesome for this kind of fishing. Stop. Came back and ate it. Came back and ate it, yep. It's another good one. Not a bad one there either. Another nice fish. See, our average has been pretty darn good today. Can't argue with that at all. Chunky. Another chunky one, yeah. You can tell they just kind of got done spawning. Tail's a little beat up there on the bottom there. Starting to put the feed bag back on, so we'll let her go and get another. Chunky fish. There we go. Boy, we've tried a lot of different things today, and it's hard to beat that swim jig right now. Black and blue, kind of a craw color. Both of them have been catching fish, but they definitely want something moving above the weeds. And it's actually, there's not a ton of different presentations you can fish in this kind of scenario right now. I mean, a Sanko should work really good, but it actually hasn't been working that well for us today. They want something moving and not stationary. Oh, watch that one come up and eat it. They're all pretty nice fish. Yeah, they're just chunky, healthy fish in here. That one came up and ate it right by the boat there. But can't argue with that. It's always fun watching them eat, that's for sure. There you go. There he is. Another nice bass, same program as we've been doing for all afternoon here. But I think uh, Tracy and I are gonna head to the boat launch pretty quick. We're about done with our four hour stint out here. But um, if you're looking for a great place to just bend the rod, feel some really aggressive strikes, there's tons of these lakes just to the west and actually all around Minneapolis, St. Paul. And it's a really fun way to fish up shallow. These fish are just getting done spawning. Uh, they're gonna go to those first weed edges. Right now we're on the inside of the weed edge still and the fish are here. So that's it for us today. Thanks for watching, we'll see you next time. For additional content related to this video, check out these videos and don't forget to subscribe to In-Depth Outdoors and Gander Outdoors so you'll never miss a new video.